Raven here. You want to be a contractor? According to your reputation, you have the right skills for the job. If you're interested, the risk is high, but so is the reward. We have multiple contracts, from solo intel gathering to team strike force operations. Locations are hot, and you were never there. If you're compromised, you're on your own. Are you ready? What's up? Lads and ladies, what an exciting day it is today. This is Petrifying Pumpkins here, and I am ultra moist. And you might guess the reason I'm ultra moist is because of Firewall Ultra. The trailer that's playing behind me here, the one I played at the beginning. So much to talk about. There is so much to talk about. I cannot control my moisture. I'm so happy. I've been smiling. My face is sore from like reading the blog post, watching the trailer. I'm going to go over the trailer. We're going to do all that together. Don't worry. We're going to go into every little minute detail. And there's a lot to talk about. There's tweet replies we need to go into and talk about because they reveal interesting little hints, winks and nods and stuff like that. So I want to go into all that as well. First things first, I think we will start with the blog post and then we'll move into the trailer analysis, maybe get down frame by frame, see what we can see. And then we'll wrap it up with some uh, Twitter posts and whatnot. If that sounds good to you, if you like Firewall, if you like the look of Firewall Ultra, not Firewall 2, Firewall Ultra, we'll get into that. Then maybe hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, you know, stick around because I'm going to be covering Firewall Ultra like, like a bed sheet cover in a bed. No. What covers something? I'll be covering Firewall Ultra like a good teammate covers his squad mates. I'm stretching it there, I'm sorry. Okay, so let's start first of all with the PS blog post which comes from our boy Frank Marm himself, which you may know as Firewall Frank. You may also know him as PS for your Frank. This blog post comes from him and we'll jump right into it. Okay, so here it is, September 6, 2022, a day we'll never forget. I'm sure a groundbreaking day for most of us Firewall fans. Revealing the evolution of the Firewall franchise for PlayStation VR 2. Don't you get goosebumps reading those words? Franchise, Firewall, for PlayStation VR 2. I mean, come on. As Frank would say. I hope Frank doesn't mind me stealing his catchphrase. And here's the new logo. The new style, it's similar, it's different, you know, it's got the same firewall energy, it's got like the digital glitchiness going on that we kind of associate with firewall, but it's got that lovely little ultra on the bottom now instead of firewall zero hour, we'll go into what that means in a sec, or what I think it means in a sec. So, firewall zero hour developer, first contact entertainment, well done first contact entertainment by the way, and a great reveal, shares a new trailer for its upcoming PSVR 2 title firewall ultra. Of course, this is by Frank Merm, as we said, Community Manager at First Contact Entertainment. So I've highlighted some interesting stuff, but we'll read through everything anyway. I'm just putting the highlights on the emphasis, the stuff I think is like really important. Okay. Since day one, First Contact Entertainment has been focused on bringing quality experiences to virtual reality. And our team has always believed in pushing the boundaries of what's possible, which is why now. After four years of support for Firewall Zero Hour, we are proud to announce that we'll be pushing those boundaries once again with our next live operated first person multiplayer shooter for PlayStation VR 2 Firewall Ultra. So, just to get us, you know, straightened up what exactly this is, it is once again a live operated first person multiplayer shooter. For PlayStation VR 2. Now, just because it says multiplayer doesn't mean it's not going to have a single player focus in there as well. We'll get to that as well in a bit. But the heart and soul of Firewall and presumably Firewall Ultra will still be that multiplayer. So, Firewall Ultra is the next evolution in the Firewall franchise. We're taking advantage of the new features that the PSVR 2 has to offer. Big thumbs up hearing that, seeing that, and we'll get into those as well. And we're excited to give you a sneak peek into how we've used some of those features for Firewall Ultra. And then we get a little gif of what's in the trailer. I don't want to go into that yet because we'll cover that in the trailer. 
that's a sneak little peek for you there, what to expect, the flashlights, I know, I know, the moisture is coming, I know. So this is where things get interesting, we get some solid details on the game, the setting, stuff like that. So this game, set five years after the original game, the contractors and locations you've grown to love have evolved. So this tells us a couple of things. Obviously, it's set in the future, but not too drastically in the future compared to Firewall Zero Hour, five years ahead. Secondly, contractors and locations you've grown to love have evolved. That means we're going to be seeing not only contractors that we're used to, I imagine. Well, I know we're going to see Okoro and stuff like that. We'll get into that again. Bus locations were also seeing maps returning and they'll have evolved. Since PSVR 2 offers a much higher level of visual fidelity with 4K high dynamic range, we've completely remade all character models. Now, does that mean every single contractor from Firewall Zero Hour is being brought into this? I don't think so. Although that's something that you might interpret with the way they've worded that. I just think that the character models we'll see, the likes of Okoro, the likes of Nala, Skip, I think they'll be coming back, but they'll be remade. That's what that that's what they're saying there. It doesn't necessarily mean we're gonna see Ruby or, you know, pff, trying to think of the more obscure Dominic Dom. Not that we won't, but you know. The maps have also seen a complete overhaul with new areas and new textures. So this is the interesting thing about Firewall Ultra. I think it's why it's not called Firewall 2, but at the same time, it's not quite a Firewall remake or remaster. It's like a mixture of both. It's like half sequel, hence the jump forward in time, hence maybe some characters looking a bit older or something like that. But it also has remake elements in that they're bringing back these old contractors, doing them up again. They're bringing back these older maps, doing them up again and they're like expanding them. So it's not just going to be the textures going up, resolution going up, all that stuff. It's gonna be like, hey, maybe this area of the map which you thought was blocked off before, it now has a door that you can open, or maybe, you know, I don't I don't know the details, obviously. Uh, we'll get into that when we see more of the game. But it sounds like we're gonna be getting access to areas of the previous maps that we didn't before. Next up, there will also be new locations and contractors. So it's not just everything in Firewall brought forward, we're going to have new stuff too. So those people who maybe think, oh, that's not good, I don't want to play the same thing again. I want to play something new. Well, it looks like everyone's kind of going to be made happy by this because you're going to have people who wanted, like there was people who wanted a remake of Firewall brought it forward to PSVR 2 standards. We're getting that basically with this and we're getting new stuff as well. So kind of everyone wins basically, at least in theory. But it wouldn't be a firewall game without the weaponry and equipment, which also feature a much deeper level of customization. Now, I don't think they go into any specifics on how well you can customize weapons and whatnot, or, you know, any equipment. But we do see a handgun being used. We do see it has a silencer that's not new. What, however, what is new is the flashlight attachment that it has. So that's going to open up uh, your customization a bit more. And of course, who knows what else we'll see. We'll go into the trailer again, we'll analyze that. Maybe we'll notice some more kind of glimpses of customization. We've been listening to our community over the past four years and we're proud to announce, and this is huge, this is huge, that you'll be playing Firewall Ultra on dedicated servers. That was like one of the biggest complaints. One of them, and there's another one, we'll get to the other one in a sec, which they've also addressed, and which is, this is why I'm smiling so much. Um, because some people are going to be so happy now. Some people are just going to like, all the complaints about Firewall 1 is like, gone. Proud to announce you'll be playing Firewall Ultra on dedicated servers. So what we have now, as you all know if you already play Firewall, is that we got P2P servers, basically. One person is the host. Depending on how far away everyone else is connected to him, you're going to have like, people lagging if they're over in a different country. You're going to have ping issues, people teleporting all over the place. And there was no host migration as well. So if that person who was host quitted, everyone got kicked back out of the lobby. It was a bit of a nightmare for a while there. Dedicated servers, however, nobody is the host. The servers, their servers, they're the host. Everyone has to connect to them. Everyone's gonna be on a more level playing field. Basically more consistent, less kicks. 
fantastic. We're also adding rounds to the game, so each match will now be best of three. I cannot tell you, by the way, I'm a community moderator for First Contact Entertainment, I should probably say that at the beginning of the video. So basically, I see a lot of people's complaints about the game and stuff like that, and probably the biggest complaint is rounds. People being like, okay, like the game, but I'm in, we win or we lose, and then we're back into the lobby. Maybe a match only lasted two minutes and we're back in the lobby again. Make it a best out of three. Now, I've never been particularly passionate about three rounds one way or the other. If they did it, fine. If they didn't do it, I was happy the way it was. I thought that maybe adding three rounds could introduce new issues, and I still think they could in terms of, well, you've won a certain round and you've stomped them. Maybe they think, well, we're not going to have a chance of winning round two or three here, so we're bouncing, we're quitting. Could happen. We'll see. Of course, we want to hopefully see maybe some punishments for people who leave early, stuff like that, in terms of affecting their XP or currency or whatever. Another interesting thing here that we, we don't get too much detail on, in this blog post anyway, so, and we're adding an entirely new PvE experience. So player versus environment. What they had in Firewall 1 was basically kind of like a horde mode mixed with contracts mode where you would hack the laptop or you would defend the laptop and you'd be up against like endless waves of bots and they would just keep spawning until the laptop was hacked and their difficulty would increase as, as you leveled up basically. And uh, it was alright, not a bad mode. Uh, some people play that mode more than the solo, but I didn't, for my money not nearly as, you know, intricate or as engaging as PvP because you're dealing with you're dealing with human intelligence versus what those AI bots were and those AI bots weren't particularly smart. They did improve them in fairness with updates. They could use tactical grenades and breach doors certain ways, so that was very cool. So it's gonna be interesting to see how they expand that, how they change that. And let's put the emphasis here on that it's an entirely new PvE experience. It's not gonna be what we've had already. Don't know what it is. Is it going to be the terrorist mode that people want where you're kind of holding a hostage or something like that? So it could be a bunch of things. Is it possible that it could be like a story type thing? Could it be like a single player campaign? It could be. We don't know yet. Plus, we have future content planned post-launch such as new contractors, maps and weapons. And that is par for the course for Firewall Zero Hour. Basically, they've eventually evolved into bringing seasons out and then seasons, each new season would bring couple of contractors, couple of weapons, and at least a map, maybe two later on in the season and the second one will pop up. So I wouldn't be surprised if they kind of copy that scheduling of releasing again. And while that is cool and everything, it's not, you know, it's that's in the distance. Let's get, let's get the base game first. Let's focus on the base game first. That's what I want to do anyway. Okay. So on top of all that, Firewall Ultra utilizes new PlayStation VR2 Sense technology features like eye tracking, so they specifically call out eye tracking and give you an example of what you can do with this. This will enable you to intuitively swap weapons and bring up HUD indicators through cameras built into the PSVR 2's headset. So this is going to let you swap weapons more easily. So the way it is now in Firewall, you press triangle, either the top button at the back on your aim controller or just the triangle button on your DualShock, DualShock controller and the character will switch weapons but it looks like here you'll be able to use your eyes to do now it's going to be interesting to see how exactly that works will you press a button and a, an option a sort an assortment of gear will pop up and you look at the one you want including maybe primary weapons secondary items uh, lethals non-lethals stuff like that will it be that way remains to be seen exactly how that's implemented but it does sound like it could be something very cool and even if you're it could be something like once you get used to it like you're just rapidly Boom, I want to do this, 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 and maybe like when you're customizing your character, building your loadout and stuff like that, maybe you'll be able to use eye tracking and stuff like that. If they have it already implemented like that, I don't see why they wouldn't be able to say it. When they say you can bring up HUD indicators through cameras built in, I mean, I just, in my mind, that just means you can interact with elements of the HUD, which should mean maybe even include menus and stuff like that. If you haven't already, make sure you check out our announcement trailer for the first look of what's on the horizon for Firewall Ultra. And before we do that, Frank, we'll read your final paragraph. Finally, we'd like to thank all of our wonderful community members from meetups to international tournaments. The community for Firewall Zero Hour far, surpa far surpassed any of our expectations. For many, Firewall Zero Hour is much more than just a game. It's a virtual family get-together. It's a place to make new friends, or it's an escape to another world from the comfort of their own living room. 
Many of our players have been with us since launch. They're extremely helpful to new players and create some of the best content we've ever seen, which we actually play in a constant loop on our lunchroom television. I know for a fact I've been on that television. I've seen it. It's been a pleasure watching you all grow and evolve and we're excited to bring you a new experience with Firewall Ultra and finally at the very end I highlighted this. We're looking forward to sharing gameplay with you soon. Of course, soon can mean anything. But this is something that maybe we were expecting to see at a PlayStation Showcase. Maybe they wanted to get the reveal done separately and then when it comes to the PlayStation Showcase we see the gameplay or whatever. Although I will say there is a bit of gameplay in the trailer that we're about to go into next. But yeah, before we move on to the trailer, I mean there's a few things worth pointing out about like this blog post is just packed full of details, tantalizing stuff, stuff that like is enough to make you very happy, stuff that fixes the issues that we've had with Firewall 1, stuff that makes you think oh how are they going to go? What kind of direction is this going to go in? Is it going to be the direction we want it to be in? As far as I'm concerned, very good blog post, very good reveal. Of course, I would love to see it on a, like a showcase, on a stage. That's where I think Firewall, like that's what it deserves to get, like a big more of a, a grander splash than a blog post. But listen, we're used to getting these blog posts now from Sony, especially when it comes to PlayStation VR 2. Because what I want to do next is go into the actual trailer that they revealed. Not a long trailer, but enough that we can uh, enjoy a little something something uh, before I do let me read out the description that they have under the YouTube video for this trailer so they say the next evolution in the firewall franchise is coming to PlayStation VR 2 enlist as an elite contractor and squad up for PvP and PvE multiplayer missions in firewall ultra a tactical first-person shooter in development by first contact entertainment for PS VR 2 just wanted to get that out of the way, that's some little blurbs, these are the things you might see on the back of the box uh, when it, the time comes for this game to come out. And uh, we hit play here and I'm gonna... You've already seen the trailer play at the beginning of this video, now I'm gonna break it down in more detail, frame by frame if need be. I'm gonna be squinting at things, I'm gonna be zooming into things, I'm gonna be, you know, getting my peepers peeped on this bad boy. So, first things first. Sony Interactive Entertainment. This is still being funded, developed, uh, or the development is being funded by Sony. The IP is Sony. Firewall is owned by Sony. It's been developed by First Contact Entertainment. Something to keep in mind. Because I believe if this game does well, and even if maybe, even before then, maybe even before the game is released, we might get an, uh, an announcement, a blog post saying, welcome to the family. First Contact Entertainment acquired by Sony. That could be something we see. I uh, would not be surprised, so let's keep going. First things first, I mean, we got the new kind of updated graphic style that they're using here, our graphics pack package or whatever you would call it. Here's the important part. Up here only on PlayStation VR 2. Not a surprise, yet we all know the Quest guys are on life support watching this, you know? It's difficult for them, so a bit of spare thought. So we open on the First Contact Entertainment logo and we hear a phone ringing. We move down, we see, you know, this kind of high-tech spy computer graphic, you know, uh, waveforms and whatnot, monitoring phone calls. You see that it's in private listen, listening mode, perhaps. Raven here. So that's the first thing to notice is that your handlers in Firewall 1 were called mother and father. Now we seem to be having, you know, this guy called Raven. Maybe he's filling that role. Could be that there's a new contractor called Raven. I won't rule that out either. But judging by the, the context of the conversation that's about to happen, sounds like this might be the guy recruiting you, getting you to do these missions, or at least one of them. Because of course, as I said already, mother had father as the counterpart. Now, we move on to like a biometric, is that the kind of correct word to use here? It's like, um, it looks like a live scan, maybe, or monitoring of one of the contractors who's perhaps out in the field right now. You see, we've got an internal scan, got body marks, scars, sores, lacerations, scrapes, cardiogram, and hematography. Hemato hem hematograph. 
I know Hema, Hema something has got something to do with the blood, so they're tracking his blood. And of course the ID stuff on the rise is all classified, censored, so no information be given with the days of birth, affiliation, nothing, nothing, nothing. Only that they're active. That's all we know about this person. So, let me go back a little bit because we did already miss something narrowly. So as we leave this screen, it's going to advance frame by frame. You see on the top that is given information about two contractors. This one up here. Okay, let, me this, let me just get the frame correct. So there, I think you can see well enough. The names are cut off on the top, but the top right is definitely Jack Turner. The fact that he's from Australia. It all, I mean, brown hair, light brown, uh, or brown eyes, I should say, light brown hair, it all adds up with Skip. Skip confirmed, as far as I'm concerned. Over here, you got an African, uh, brown eyes, black hair, and I believe you can see Nala. Nala is the first name, so that's Nala confirmed, Skip confirmed, and soon we'll see that Okoro is confirmed. I'm taking these to mean confirmations, and I wouldn't be surprised. These are kind of well-known firewall characters. On the right, you can see then, it's a timer, but that's less important. Uh, you got a transcript of the phone call as they're talking. So, Raven here, you want to be a contractor. According to your reputation. According to your reputation, whatever. And then we paused on a good spot here, because this is the confirmation of Okoro we have here. Let me just go back a little bit, see if he's... I'm going to go forward a bit, that's what I should have done. So we got Okoro here, with this yellow kind of... A, Framing of him, the color scheme is yellow here, like a filter almost over him. This gentleman then to his left is blue. I can't really make out the name. I have a feeling it could be Malik from the first one. I'm not 100% on that though. As you can see, this is kind of the best look you get at this guy. Possibly he's a new contractor. Bald, has a beard. But keep in mind, time has advanced. They're going to look different, so you might have the same contractor from Firewall. Time has advanced. I mean, look at Okoro. He's not wearing his uh, his beret anymore. He looks a bit different. He's got a different style going on. Uh, it could be a bit more white in his beard, perhaps, down at the bottom here. You can kind of see maybe he's gone a bit gray. So this could be Malik. Maybe he's grown out a full beard. Because he does have like that kind of a Middle Eastern kind of look. Uh, but of course... If you think differently, let me know in the comments below. And then above, we can see a map that seems to be focusing on South America. We've got a drop size, and we'll see if we can get it a bit clearer. We've got a drop size highlighted, and this is a bit strange because of what we know. This part kind of stumped me, it has stumped me a little bit. So it says Brazil. Drop site Brazil, it's got a red square around it, we're highlighting this area. Now of course there's this other green dot here, but I have a feeling this might not be too relevant. I think that just might be, you know, making it look a bit flashier. What's interesting about this is that when we do go to this drop site Brazil, which is heavily implied by the zoom in, that the map we see looks like it's from an older map that we know was not in Brazil. First things first. The Brazilians who have been begging for a Brazilian map for such a long time, I think I'm happy for them. You know, I'm really happy for them that they're getting this. But let's let me let me show you what I mean. Going from so this is okay. I should have just went to here where you can see perfectly clear drop size Brazil. We're zooming in. We're getting a look at this, right? Now, here's the map. This map resembles heavily the bunker map. Uh, you'll see. The rocky area here you'll see like the server room area here you can see the stairways going down to the right hand side which is kind of like it's all reminiscent of bunker and you'll see it as well when we go into the actual gameplay slash uh, cinematic in engine stuff uh, you can see over here as well three dudes who i believe are ai i think these guys are ai bots i think what we're going to be witnessing here is not the multiplayer it's actually pve whatever the new mode is uh, I think it will be a new mode because they've said they've changed this in the blog post so I don't think it's going to be what we had already. So let me play a bit further. 
Now, okay, I mean, immediately we want to talk about the flashlights. I do. This is what's like, oh my god, I see the flashlight. This is what we were promised with Firewall 1 when they very, the very first time they revealed that. Firewall 1, the compound map, nighttime, everyone had flashlights. It looked so cool, and I was disappointed uh, when that got cut. Understandable because it was running on 2013 hardware, they couldn't render eight flashlights going around the place and casting shadows and whatnot. So yes, flashlight is there. I can't I can't put that off. I just have to talk about that immediately. And you can't even what can you say about this? I mean it's a flashlight. You know what it is, you've seen this in a million other first person uh, shooter games. But just the fact that it's in firewall, I mean it adds so much. I mean look how much darker you can make your map now. But based on what we're seeing here, I'm not saying that the map itself when you're playing this in game will be this dark. Another thing worth pointing out here on the boss, captured on game engine. So mix of gameplay and non-game cinematics. So there's a mixture here. So while this may not be running on a PS5, it is still running on the game engine that this will be running on. So I imagine it's not gonna look too dissimilar from what we're playing on uh, in the headset itself. And then when we have the headset ourselves, it might even look better in the headset because we're gonna have the foveated render. We're gonna have all that cool stuff. All right, let me play on a little bit here. We're seeing he's in an area, it looks like he's and look at the detail. Look at the detail. Now the contractor is talking. We'll go back to that and we listen to what the contractor is saying if we want to see if there's anything interesting there. I don't think there is particularly anything worth going into. I think it's just kind of set dressing. Uh, but this, speaking of set dressing, this is the kind of stuff, you know, that you want to see in terms of like remakes and stuff like that. If we're remaking old maps and we're adding new areas, we also want to add cool details like this, which is a bunch of what, whatever the hell they are, insects, uh, scuttling along on the floor. Which is a very cool touch. Hopefully that's not just part of the cinematics and it's actually part of the game. But so is the reward. And now as you can see, and now this is where it's hard to talk about here because I don't know how much of this is gonna be like reflective of what we see in the game, but as you can see is the torch, as the flashlight, I should say, approaches the metallic door frame. It seems to bounce light back, as you can see, it's like a, it creates like a lens flare effect. Which is like a small detail, but like a kind of cool cinematic it gives it a cinematic kind of a feel which brings us to the next area here now he's going to open the door you're going to see the laptop but what i want to pay attention to is what i feel might be a new feature or maybe a new device or a function where he's doing he's doing some kind of a scan and he's seen what well, i'll show you in the we'll see it we'll see it in the, the play here opens the door and then boom there seems to be some kind of a scan going on where okay this door here it's covered in red symbolism, uh, holograms or whatever, that's non-interactable or it's locked, one or the other. Camera moves on a bit here, we got your objective, you look at us, it's pulsating, you got one dot, now this is interesting, because you got your dot here, this is your objective, there's another dot over here though, and as we go on, you see another dot here, and another dot here. Now, I don't think these dots are supposed to be like, I don't think this is like, you know, oh, here's some gas canisters or whatever. I think these could indicate different objectives on the map. Now, you might think, well, these could be probably access points, but as you'll see, well, I'll just tell you because I don't want to skip stuff here. But as you'll see, he's just going to walk up to us and immediately start hacking. So it seems as if he's already got the access point. If you know what I mean. Now, could that just be for the sake of the demonstration, for the sake of the trailer? Absolutely. Could be reading too much into that there. But it is possible that there's more than one objective in play in these PvE maps based on these dots. Now, we've got this view again, which I'm not expecting to see in the game. I think this is just purely razzle dazzle. Uh, you can see this character here, who I believe is Okoro. We'll get to that in a sec. And then you got the three enemies here, and I think these are just like nondescript bots. But let's see. So you see them dots again. Now you approach the laptop. In Firewall 1, when you approach the laptop, you get the X symbol. Go up to us, hold X to hack. What we're seeing here is go up to us and point at us or move your hand towards it. So we're getting we're getting to something important that I haven't touched upon at all yet. And that is the fact that it looks like Firewall 2 is going to be, well, you can probably more have guessed us, it's going to be supporting the sense controllers. It's going to be a big part of us as individual hand movements, and maybe you'll 
your finger detection stuff is going to be interacting with the keys and whatnot, so I don't know about that. But basically, you have to physically like move your hand towards the laptop, it looks like, to initiate the hack. As you'll see. Now he's hacking here, we're getting an overhead view of the, uh, what I believe are the NPCs. And the big reason I believe that these are NPCs and this is PvE is because this character here is by himself. Now if this was multiplayer, if this was PvP, we'd be talking about, you know, four versus four if they, if they maintain that from Firewall 1. And you'd be putting the focus on communication, teamwork, strategy, which is kind of what Firewall 1 did in their trailers. You know, whereas this is a focus on this character who I believe is playing as a, an Okoro, kind of stealthily lone wolfing his way through this bunker map while well, he doesn't go too far. It's just like opening a door, hacking a laptop, and he's facing off against three enemies. So I think that's why it's PvP we're looking at. Or PvE, I should say, sorry. Are hot, and you were never there. So I imagine you hold your hand near us. Now you got one hand free to shoot the handgun maybe, but uh, you're not going to be using your rifle, would be my guess. Now do you actually have to keep your hand held there, or would you stand in there be enough? I don't know. Kind of a wait and see. Now this looks like it could be just pure cinematic cutscene, this part where he's actually like typing individual buttons and stuff like that. And continue on. Now he can see the flashlights, I mean they're showing off the lighting systems and whatnot and how, you know, Flashlights will give you away, basically. You're on your own. And now, something fascinating here. Well, well, first of all, this is why I think it's Okoro. You look down, you see his black hands, basically. I'm trying to think of how many black male characters win Firewall, Firewall 1. And it's a few black characters, but I think because Okoro is like... I think he's become the poster child. I don't think he was originally. I think that was Skip. But because everyone went for that heavy, juicy skill, Okoro became like a symbol of Firewall. And of course the memes. Now there's a couple of interesting things to notice here. I'm going to frame forward a little bit so it ends the animation. Basically, he's looking at his weapon to bring up the UI, which shows the weapon counter and the item counters. Now this isn't new. We've seen this in Firewall 1. What's different here is it looks slicker. Now here's something I want to bring up, and this was brought to my attention by... Um, Right, so this is someone called Moses. Okay, so I'll have Moses' username up on the screen so you can go give him a follow on Twitter or whatever. But basically, this is what he pointed out to me. And it could be nothing, but I just thought it was like interesting enough based on the number of bullets and stuff. It's kind of like an unusual way that they did this. I know it could just be to add dramatic tension or whatever. But it might be worth pointing out that uh, on the TNK here, which you can see is actually the name of the gun, I don't think in Firewall it gave you the name of the gun you were using, but it looks like it does here. He's two bullets left two grenades and one signal modifier so 221 american style that's february 21st is this game coming out on the 21st of february it's a stretch could be complete like it might mean nothing at all i think it's probably just like showing you two bullets because you know there's three enemies coming around the corner he's only got two bullets left what's he gonna do but yeah just something i thought i'd point out there and we'll move on course we're reaching the dramatic conclusion and something flashed red there that I want to see what was that on his gun the UI uh, so the what's in the magazine of the reserves basically flashing red indicating maybe he tried to press reload button it's like red no you can't do that and then comes out of cover you imagine he's putting the two sense controllers together to get the two-handed grip and there's like volumetric fog and stuff going on there so you don't get a clear look, especially with their flashlight coming in your face. You can't actually see them. Again, could completely be down to cinematic uh, play scene and all that might not be what it actually seems like in the game itself, but that's the kind of effect they're going for here. And then it ends. Are you ready? Firewall Ultra, we'll get all these up. So, gets all hype the next generation of firewall and then a boom 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 with time with the music and, you know gets you really hype got me really hype did, did something for me it's showing you all these features that they're using finger touch detection so basically the sense controllers will be track tracking these three fingers on each hand so you'll be able to do gestures you should be able to go like this bang bang you know adaptive triggers so different weapons will have different pull resistances and maybe they can do other things with that 
eye tracking, not only with foveated rendering, but also as they've confirmed, you can be interacting with the UI using eye tracking. And over here, foveated rendering, so that's confirmed as well. And of course, that's very exciting. If you don't know what foveated rendering means, basically, wherever you're looking, that's where they can put all the horsepower of the PS5. So everything else won't be as sharp, but you won't care because you're not looking where everything else isn't as sharp. You can only look in one place at once and where you're looking is going to be nice and crisp and that's going to free up so much horsepower for the PS5 to allow them to do other things, which is just I mean, amazing news. 110 degree field of view, so they're going to be utilizing all of that. Fast load times thanks to the SSD. 4K high dynamic range, which we know, and of course haptic feedback thanks to the sense control. Pretty much every bell and whistle that the PSVR 2 has going for us, firewall is going to be demonstrating this. So I mean, this could be the poster child for PSVR 2. This could be the game that you really want to make sure launches in the launch window. If this is a day one PSVR 2 game, if this could be something that you bundle with PSVR 2, I mean, you're talking about like real potential for firewall ultra i may have been for calling it firewall 2 i can't remember but it's in my head it's firewall 2 but it's firewall ultra i have to get used to that there's real potential for firewall ultra to completely dwarf what firewall zero hour did in terms of like player numbers player counts and god knows what the future of this game could be it could be beautiful so if you look it up on the ps blog i have all the links in the description so if you want to wishlist it yourself you can do that you probably have to go to your own store uh, depending on the region you're in, wishlist us, add it to your wishlist, and then I think they'll, uh, what does wishlisting do? I think it like emails you when there's updates about us on the on PSN and whatnot. Plus, it gives Sony an idea of like, hey, a lot of people are wishlisting this game, so let's put a lot of focus on this game. So if you're a fan of Firewall, I recommend wishlisting it, you know, let Sony know that you want this. So yeah, I'm going to play it again now because I was talking over the audio just to make sure I didn't miss anything. Just based on him talking, the way he's talking makes me feel like there might be more of a story element based to the PvE. Maybe, according to your reputation, you want to be a contractor. Could it be that it's more of a custom thing? You know, I know they're using Okoro here, but what if you're making a custom character for PvE? Possibly something to consider, pure speculation. Again, just the fact that this is clearly out labeled as the objective maybe objective one could there be multiple I mean the same iconography is being used on these other ones so if it's like a lesser objective you should have a different icon think back to firewall one you had the blue one for the laptop you have the yellow ones for the access points I think I've got that right maybe I've mixed them up but these ones are all identical Okay, so he's telling you what's available, solo and team, single player and multiplayer. Locations are hot, and you were never there. If you're compromised, you're on your own. So yeah, a very different feel to how they revealed the original Firewall in terms of like what they showed. So a big focus on solo play in this trailer and being a bit stealthy as well perhaps and kind of like i mean we didn't get a proper look at what you could do stealth wise but if you're talking about dark areas crouching down flashlights stuff like that maybe stealth will bring like a, a role into it at least in the you know pve where maybe you can more easily fool the ai rather than you would with a human are you ready oh i'm ready well just waiting for sony to be ready get them PSVR 2 headsets into them shops immediately. So that is going to bring me back to some tweets which I think are worth a look. So basically PlayStation tweeted out this video and then Firewall themselves tweeted out this video and they've been replying in the comments to people based on what they've said and based on these replies you can maybe infer some stuff yourself which I'm kind of doing. So this gentleman here, this individual, says multiplayer only, sad face, would love some good single player slash co-op story mode and they replied with, you're going to love 
the new PvE experience. So this fella says he would love good single player slash co-op story mode and they've replied to him saying you're going to love this new the new PvE experience. We've thought about players that don't do MP as well. So there's something there's going to be something here for the uh, the solo players out there and it seems to me like it might be story focused based on this. You've got this fella here, Bozoid, who I believe is a big Quest fan, saying nice CGI, dot dot dot. First contact replying saying gameplay coming soon, pretty sure you're going to be happy. Now, I just want to highlight that because, you know, it's exciting that, you know, gameplay is coming soon. It's exciting to be like in the, the run up, the reveal, the pre-release hype kind of stuff. Again, it's like, it brings back the familiar feelings, you know? So yeah, we will see gameplay soon. Of course, soon could mean anything. So keep your ears to the ground on that one. So next up is their official announcement themselves from their own page where they retweeted the PlayStation 1 saying, we're proud to announce that our next game, Firewall Ultra. F you, by the way. Firewall Ultra, that's the abbreviation they have going on there. Uh, it's, it's a wonder that that got through the checks or whatever that they do. If you ask me, I like it though. F you. You know, what are you playing? F you. That's what I'm playing. Anyway, it's currently in development for the PSVR 2. Check out the recent PlayStation blog for all the info and make sure to keep an eye on our social channels for more updates, which is what I'm going to be doing, of course. Well, for some reason it doesn't show up, but this is from Ali, who we know on the channel. How's it going, Ali, if you're watching? Can you confirm if this will play with the existing PSVR aim controller? This is a topic many of you might be interested in. Uh, if that will work on PSVR 2 or a new upgraded one. So they replied saying, we're really excited for you to get your hands on with the new Sense controllers. If you'd like, you can wishlist here. And I think that response, even though they don't directly answer his question, I think they do answer his question. I think we cannot expect an aim for this game. Not the original aim, anyway. Now, not to say that there won't be another aim controller in the future. But we've heard nothing about that yet. And if this game is a launch game or in the launch window it might be that firewall comes out before an aim controller 2 if they were going to launch this with uh, aim, tr aim controller 2 i think they'd be talking about it by now the fact that they're focusing on sense anytime someone asks about the aim controller which they do as well i'll go back they bring up the sense controller so i think that's the answer so this person here aaron d or Aaron O, I should say, my eyes are failing me. Dang, I can't wait. Quick question, will the gun for the PSVR work for this game? And the reply is, we can't wait either. And we're really excited for you to check out the new Sense controllers. So that's the answer. No aim. Don't expect an aim. I don't think expect aim 2 either. My gut is telling me that at least it's not in development now. Maybe somewhere in Sony, they're working on one. But it might not be out until like, you know, a year after PSVR comes out. Or maybe a year after firewall comes out or something like that and then maybe they have to patch it in keep in mind as well that when you're adding motion controllers two motion controllers and you're bringing in separate hand movements that allow you to do certain things like if you can shoot with one hand if you can have a knife in another hand i'm not saying you can but if you could how then would you translate that into an aim controller especially if you want to keep things competitive which is kind of like like firewall is the biggest competitive game maybe on ps4 at least so maybe we have to forget about um the aim controller for firewall ultra you know maybe now in my opinion i think that if we lose the aim or the aim, a potential aim to but they're being replaced by these two sense controllers which have all these features and they sound really cool and they may allow us to do things that you wouldn't be able to do with a two-handed weapon it could be that the trade-off is worth it for me but i'm definitely willing to give it a shot and see how it feels and maybe we'll see some third party accessories that bring back that two-handed feel if we want us if we need us you know and so i think that is it for now i think that that is everything we know about firewall ultra as of now of course it's just been revealed but i think there's a lot to talk about there um i mean dedicated servers the rounds maybe an expanded and enhanced pve mode that might be worth you know even peeling away the the multiplayer fans might you know be taken away from that and try out some pve a bit more the flashlights the details the 4k the hdr the fact that it's like a sequel slash remake which is very interesting to me still questions remain of course when is the release date going to be it could be that they can't even talk about release dates until sony 
confirm the PSVR 2 release days and then maybe, fingers crossed, how amazing would it be? How moisture inducing would it be if Firewall Ultra was a launch title for PSVR 2? I mean, what else would you need? What else would you want? And an unbelievable, and you're talking about Resident Evil A's as well being there for launch. Resident Evil A's, Firewall Ultra. That's just this. That's just the tip of the iceberg, lads. It's uh, it's exciting to be a PSVR 2 uh, enthusiast right now, and I think there's going to be a lot more of us soon, hopefully. Listen, I don't know if there's an anything else I can say about this. I don't know how much more I can talk about this. I have to edit all this down now. It's like an over an hour of fuzzage here, me babbling and drooling over this game and how good it looks, the lighting. I mean, I could probably talk about just how good it looks. You know, the shadows, this is what I've wanted. This is what I wanted in Firewall 1 for so long. Boss, let's get you involved. I want you in the comments. I want you to let me know what you think. What do you think about the half remake, half sequel approach? Half old, but remade, and half new. And of course I'm saying half, but I don't know what the actual ratio is. It could be 60, 40, 70, 30, who knows? What do you think of the new name? What do you think of all these features they're talking about? What do you think about dedicated servers, the rounds? Is this something that like is going to bring you back to Firewall? Had you left? Are you going to come back? Or if you're a current Firewall player, is it something like the rounds? Is that like, oh no, I don't want that. Is that putting you off? You know, I want to hear from all sides of the, uh, the arguments here. So yeah, and if you liked the video, if you enjoyed us, you want to stick around, hit the subscribe button, all that usual YouTube and shice. Uh, let me thank Decepticon for letting me use his music in all of my videos. I'll have his Firewall remix playing in the background of this one. And I think we're all going to have some moist dreams tonight. Some wet ones, perhaps. Until then, please stay nice and moist. Petrifying punk.